If tomorrow all the things were gone I'd worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife Then my lucky stars To be living here today But the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away But there ain't no doubt I love this man I'm glad the USA the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas To see the shining sea Detroit down to Houston York to L.A., where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time to stand and say, that I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I'd gladly stand up. Defenders still today, but there ain't no doubt I love this land. I fight the USA. I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave the right to me, and I'd gladly. Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Venture Online today. Uh, it's a little weird being up here today because we're online only, but uh, we appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and being a part of that. Uh, we again want to say, you know, also happy 4th of July to you all. We hope you're doing well this holiday weekend. And I have a couple announcements for you. The first one is uh, just a reminder that our Sunday Summer Series is going on right now. Uh, we got all kinds of events that are coming up down the, down the pipeline and would love for you guys to sign up. Just go to our website and, and you can check that out. Or you can go to our app and we would love for you guys to download our app if you have not done so already. Uh, you can do that in uh, any way you can, uh, Android Play Store or the iPhone App Store, whatever you use, we'd appreciate you doing that. Because uh, on there, you can do all kinds of things through our church, uh, pray, uh, you can watch us online through there, you can uh, do all kinds of stuff and see our calendar for things like Sunday Summer Series. Uh, but also, you can use it to give. And as Christians, we know that we're supposed to tithe to our church. And so today that's ever more present because we're online only. And so that is a great feature to have. And so we appreciate you guys doing that today and in, in, in doing the offering. And so uh, we ask that uh, you will participate in that. And, and what I'm going to do is in a moment, we're going to show a video for 4th of July uh, that I would love for you guys to see. It's a little, a little fun today to celebrate that. Uh, but before I do that, let me pray for, uh, for our offering today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for allowing us to just be here to come and worship with you, uh, be it online today, uh, but we know your presence wherever you are. And so, Father, we just thank you for that opportunity that we get to worship with you uh, today. Uh, Father, we ask that you just be with the gifts that we are going to give today, and we ask that you just bless us and bless them so that it will further your kingdom uh, and glorify you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, I'm Eddie. My name's Tommy, and we are the Skit Guys. And we're here to talk to you about Independence Day. Yeah, that's right. It was a dark time when the aliens invaded, but 
The president jumped up on that truck and said, we will not go quietly into the night. And we had our Independence Day. You were thinking of the movie. They made a movie. Why don't we talk about what the 4th of July is in a general sense? Sounds great. I will take point on that. You don't have to do that. 4th of July is a time of year when it's usually hot. That's it? It is hot. I mean, like, like seriously hot. Unless, I mean, unless you live in Canada or something. All right. Well, they don't have July 4th in Canada, just in America. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying that other countries' calendars go, like, from July 3rd to July 5th? No one's saying it isn't hot. I just think maybe we should give people a little more, you know, uh, a little more stuff. You know, like the important elements. So you want me to cover the periodic table? All right. I would just feed you, okay? So the 4th of July celebrates our independence from... Our parents. No. Yes. No! I celebrate every year the day I got out of Mama's house. Okay. We celebrate our independence from Great Britain that we won after fighting the Revolutionary War, all right? In which we were led by General... Contractors, mm. which are much better than just a handyman. They just have a, a better general knowledge base of building. I'm gonna take a walk. Was it, was it General Motors? So Tommy, what do you think about when you think about the 4th of July? I'm just gonna try to help you. Just, what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? 4th of July? Fireworks. Fireworks, yeah, good, good, fireworks. okay. Okay, keep going, you think of fireworks. Yep, that's what okay. I think of too. Okay. No, no, okay, well, I mean you, go ahead. Nope. What else, what else do you think of? Fireworks. Okay, okay, let's let's think of something besides the fireworks. Uh, 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 bottle rockets, mm -hmm. uh, screaming memes, just, uh, M80s, uh, let's just try to get candles. Fireworks. Okay, all right, can we just please get off the fireworks? Are you even American? You wanna know what the 4th of July is about? It's about freedom, but it's so much more than that. It's about opportunity. While we have the freedom to not agree with everyone on everything in this country, one thing we should all agree on is that we live in one of the most blessed countries in the world. This 4th of July, spend time celebrating the freedom you've been given. Celebrate the rights you have and don't let it end there. Appreciate it all year round and be glad our forefathers signed the Declaration of Independence so, so many years ago. You are so smart. Thanks. Hey, God bless you. Did somebody sneeze? And God bless America. Happy 4th of July.
Welcome, everybody. We are so glad that you tuned in. It is wonderful to see you on this beautiful 4th of July day. Uh, and God is definitely on the move. Amen. We invite you all to just continue to worship the Lord with, uh, with us as we continue to sing this morning.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day of independence we have, God. And as we draw together, God, all across the nation, God, I ask, Lord, that you would just meet with us today, God, so that we would know you better after today than the day before. And all of God's people said, Amen. Good morning, church. I am very thankful to have all of you with us today. I know we're all joining us with Church Online today. I know it's probably a little weird not uh, having an in-person service today, but um, you know what? God is wherever we are at meeting and, and it's going to be a good thing. So, uh, but first of all, I need to remind you that wherever you are, God has placed you there for a reason and a purpose. And uh, we pray all the time that God will show you what that is. And we're praying that today as well. Uh, as we get started, I'm wondering uh, if you guys can handle a very honest confession from me today. Uh, I want to be real transparent with you today. Uh, and so I'm going to make this confession. And I'm going to tell you that I am a pastor and sometimes I find it difficult uh, to put all my trust in God. Uh, can, I hope I can be real with you like that, but that is truth. Um, I hope some of you, um, or I hope you're with me and feeling that way sometimes as well. You know, you, you say, I want to trust in God, but sometimes I find it a little bit more difficult to trust in him. You know, it's easier to say to trust in God uh, than it is often to, to do this, right? Uh, you might feel like, um, I love God and I believe in God, but I still feel uh, uneasy about the future. When you look around, 
Uh, there's a lot to feel uneasy about, isn't there? You know, uh, there's tension all over the country. Uh, there's this racial and political division that's that's very very real, and it's very very important that we navigate through that as well. And so often, you may look around and ask yourself, "Well, what if?" And we start playing this what if game, right? What if so and so happens, and and life goes on, right? And it's really easy to ask a lot of what ifs. And especially in the current climate and environment that we we are in we might ask ourselves like what if i lose my job right or what if i get sick or or someone that i love gets gets sick what if i have to homeschool our kids for the rest of the year you know or rest of our lives or whatever uh, i hope you guys all know what i'm i'm talking about it's it's easy to play uh the what if game right and some of you might say well what if i'm I'm single for the rest of my life. Or what if I do get married and I marry the wrong person? Doesn't that, doesn't, doesn't that mean that I'm going to have the, the wrong kids? You know? or, or what if I did get married and I married the right person and I have the right kids, but I have the wrong job, right? But I can't quit my job because my kids need braces or whatever. And if my kids don't get braces, then they're going to marry the wrong person, right? And then that means that they will have to, uh, they will end up having the wrong kids, right? Which means I might have the wrong grandkids, you know, down the road. And that would be just really awkward uh, conversation to have with my grandkids and going, well, you kids aren't the right kids or grandkids that I was expecting, right? And, 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 and you know how easy it is to run into all these what ifs. And so I don't know about you, but I want to trust God. But sometimes I just want to say, God is difficult to trust in a God that I can't see. And there's a lot that I can see, right? I can see the COVID craziness everywhere. I can see when my bank account goes down. I can see all the tension every time I read or watch anything in the news. You know, God, I want to trust you, but, it, but it's hard when I don't really see you, you know? And, and some of you might say, how can I trust in God when I did, when I did trust in God, but he didn't, he didn't do what I asked him to do? You know, I prayed and I, I had faith and I believed and I trusted him and he could have and, 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 and he, but he didn't, you know, and, and I really wanted to trust God, but sometimes it's just not easy to do. And so that's why today we're starting this new series. Uh, it's a very uh, complicated, in, in this very complicated season in our world, um, we, we're, we're calling this series, In God We Trust, okay? And the title of today's message is actually a question. And I want to ask this question. Can you trust God? Can you trust God? And the answer, I believe, is absolutely, unequivocally, yes, you can. But uh, we're going to need his word and his spirit to help us to do so, right? And so what I want to do today is I want to show you a story from Luke's gospel. It's from Luke chapter 5. So as you're joining us online today, I appreciate you guys getting there. Um, if you're doing church online, you can actually pull it right up there. You can see the Bible right there. Otherwise, you can use your, your, your actual physical Bible or a phone or whatever you're using. Um, but before we dive, dive into that story, I want to give you, um, today I'm going to give you two prayers that I believe will help build your trust, okay? Uh, so let me give you the context first, and then we'll look at two prayers that will, I hope will build your trust, all right? The story behind the story is this. Jesus was at a lake and he was teaching and it was kind of like a, a Bible study or what we might call a, a life group, right? And it was at the end of a very frustrating uh, day for some of the fishermen and, and who had been there, they'd been out there all day and, and what they, they were doing exactly what they normally would do, but they didn't have ex the success that they normally would have had. They didn't catch anything that day. And so they were cleaning up their boats and, and putting away their nets. And then Jesus walked up onto one of the boats that belonged to Simon Peter. And he said, hey, bro, uh, would you just take us out on the water? You know, I, I don't know if he said it like that. This just sounds weird. But <laughs> and so sure enough, here you got Simon took him out on the water and Jesus gave him a little lesson, a teaching. And, and here's what happened. I hope you're with me on Luke chapter five, uh, starting with verse four. Here's what it reads. It says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now, I want you to see something. Simon is going to answer him, okay? But I, I need to pause there to tell you um, what Simon said. Because to me, this Simon is, is doing uh, the best 
to be polite here is what he's going to do. Okay, he's, he's got Jesus, this, this very important person who just taught him a really great message, asking him, an experienced fisherman himself, right, to, to do something that makes no sense to, to you know, Simon Peter whatsoever, right? And so I believe Simon's trying to be polite here, uh, you know, and I can guarantee what, he, what he's kind of thinking, right? Like, teacher, you teach, you know, uh, you, you're the teacher, you teach, and, and, and I'm a fisherman and I'll fish, right? Uh, you're the rabbi, you rabbi, and I'll do what I do, right? And, and, and it's kind of like, well, you know, and at the same time, who are you to tell me you know, what I'm supposed to be doing, right? There's, there's generations and generations of fishermen in my family, and, and you're kind of, you're, you're getting on my boat and, and taking up kind of my time and giving me, you know, like this, this advice that just sounds really stupid, right? And, and so Simon says something to, to Jesus, and, and I want you guys to listen, look at what he says. It's in uh, verse five. He says, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. They haven't caught anything. And Simon's basically saying, what you're asking me to do feels really, really stupid, right? It doesn't make any sense. We, we've been out there all night. We haven't caught anything. What are you talking about, right? Now, how many of you know this? That, that oftentimes what, what, what God asks you, asks you to do, it doesn't make any sense, right? So often when, when God will invite you to put, put your trust in him, it can make you feel uh, really, really stupid, right? This, that doesn't make any sense, you know? And, and you might read in Scripture then where Jesus says, you know, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. And it's really easy to quote that to someone else, but sometimes when you read it, you think, have you seen what's going on in our country right now? You know, you know somebody's got to worry about it. Somebody's got to do something about it, you know? That, does, that, does, that doesn't make uh, sense to a, ho a whole lot to me be right now because, you know, don't worry about tomorrow, you know? Well, somebody better worry about tomorrow with what's going on, right? And then you might read in Scripture, you know, bless those who persecute you. And it's, and it's really easy to quote to, to someone as well, but, but you don't know the people that I'm working with, right? You, you just don't know. So how does that work, right? And Scripture also says, don't lean on your own understanding, but if I don't lean on my own understanding, sometimes my bills aren't going to get paid, right? You know, uh, got to get that paid. What you're asking me to do, sometimes it just feels unreasonable. It feels, you know, completely stupid. I want to trust in you, God, but you, you've got to give me a little something, right? I can't see you and I can't always feel you. And so our first prayer that we're going to see from the scripture is this. Uh, a very powerful prayer, I, I believe. Uh, it is this. Lord, help me to obey you even when I don't understand, right? I want to say that again. Lord, help me to obey you even when I don't understand. And what's so powerful to me is that we see this prayer lived out when, when, when Simon, by faith, did what Jesus asked him to do, and he lets down his nets, okay? Let's look at, look at it again in our scripture. We're looking at verse, verse 5 again. Let's start over in verse 5, so where Simon answered him. Simon answered it, right? He says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Okay? I will let down the nets. In other words, Simon says, this doesn't make any sense to me, right? But because you say so, because you're asking me to do it, and because of who you are, God, I'm choosing to put my trust in you, right? And, and this action leads up to the conclusion that, that you don't have to understand completely to obey immediately. I hope you'll write that down. That, that, that you don't have to understand completely to obey immediately. Okay? You don't have to know the end of the story to, to turn the first page of the story, do you? And, and, and you can do that by being obedient by doing that, right? To, to the one who asked you to do that. And a lot of times, we, we think of trusting God, we tend to think of the big things, right? Like, okay, God, I know you're going to ask me to obey. I get it. I know you're going to ask me to obey. But, you know, is it going to be to a, a, a big city or a new city or, or, or start a new career? Or what's it going to be, God? And that might be the case. He asks you for something big like that. But what I've found is to, to really grow our trust and our faith in God, it, it often starts by trusting him in the smallest ways. 
And sometimes the, the smallest acts of obedience and, and trust lead to the biggest results or the biggest blessings and the biggest miracles, right? So how do we grow in that trust? How do we grow in that trust? How do we learn to trust God in a God that we want to trust in, right? But sometimes it's, it's hard, right? Because we can't just see him. And, and what we want to do is I want to give you some advice today. And it's only in this area. Uh, and what you've got to do is you've just got to get clingy, okay? You've got to get clingy. And, and now I promise you, if you're dating, first of all, <laughs> it, it, you don't want to get clingy when you're dating, okay? That's just weird. I just got to tell you that before I let you go into this, okay? But when it comes to God, sometimes you just need to get clingy, okay? There, there's a great Bible verse. If you've been a Christian for a long time, uh, you probably have a coffee mug with this Bible verse on it, okay? Uh, it's, it's probably this one. It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways in Him, He will make your paths straight. The word acknowledge comes from the Hebrew word, which means to know, okay? In all your ways, know Him, and He will make your path straight, right? In all your ways, you know Him. You know Him on the mountaintops, you, you know Him in the valleys, right? When you know Him in the good times, you learn to trust Him in the bad times, okay? So how do you know God? That's, our, that's another question. How do you know Him intimately? How do you know Him, trust Him, and walk in Him, right? The only way that you can know Him is to be close to Him, okay? And the way to be close to Him is to cling to Him, okay? The word trust at the very beginning of the verse, the trust in the Lord, you know, well, how do you do that? Well, the Hebrew word tr uh, translated as trust, it means to cling to. Not, just to, not just to be close in proximity, but to hold on to, to not let go, right? Here's the key. In order to hold on to God, you have to let go of whatever else you have previously were clinging on to, okay? Let me say that one again. In order to hold on to God, you have to let go of whatever else you were previously clinging to, okay? So in order to trust him, you, you lean not on your own understanding, okay? And can I say for a moment, before we really dive into this, that's just hard, okay? Let's just be real honest. It's hard. It's, it's almost not, not fair, really, to tell me to, to lean, right? Or not to lean, or to lean, you know, in a different direction. I, I'm wired to lean on my own understanding, okay? Some would say it's a strength that I, that I can figure this out, right, on my own, right? But when you get to the place where, where, where you let go of your own understanding, your own plans, your own desires, your own will, your own strategy, your own piece of comfort or place of comfort, and when you cling on to this, to this one who is the rock, right, who will never fail you, who, who, who um, you cling to their faithfulness and the goodness, and, and, they're, and they're the only one who is really is good, right? Then, then anything else that you brought into the illusion of security before fades away in, in the presence and the strength and the goodness and the grace of our God, right? Somebody watching this needs to get clingy. I'm just going to tell you that. You need to get clingy. It's time to cling to the promises of God, okay? Do not let go. Cling to the promises of God. You can say, God, I, I thank you that I can, can, I, I can tr cast my cares upon you because you faithfully care for me. You know, you can say, God, I'm clinging to your truth that you will provide all for all of my needs, right, according to your glorious riches in, in Christ Jesus. You can say, God, I thank you and I praise you that, our, that you are working all things to bring about good to those who love you and those who are called according to your purpose. God, I can cling to your truth that you will never leave me, you will never forsake me, that when I draw near to you, that, that you will also draw near to me, right? God, you are my refuge, you are my strength, you are my help in times of trouble. In order to cling to the goodness of God, you have to release what you were clinging on to before, right? Lord, help me to trust you, to cling to you, even when I don't understand. And here's what I promise you. God will prompt you in, in, in some way. He, he'll invite you to trust him, I promise you. And what you'll discover is that big miracles often uh, follow simple acts of obedience, okay? And we see this in our story. Jesus says, let down the nets for a catch, right? And Simon says, we'll trust you. 
And then scripture reads on. And I want you guys to read that with me. It's in verse 6. It says, When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats to, so full that they began to sink. You know, Lord, help me obey even when I don't understand. And our second prayer is this, that you can pray is, Lord, help me surrender what I cannot control. I hope you'll write that down. Lord, help me surrender what I cannot control. You see, I love this. Simon obeys and he lets down the nets and he's surprised, right? He catches so many fish that the nets can't even contain them. And suddenly then he realizes, oh my gosh, Jesus is not a rabbi. He is a holy one. I, wa I want you to look at, look at Peter's reaction here. Are you ready? Uh, look at verse, verse 8. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Right? And then I love what Jesus does. If you imagine Jesus' love, Jesus says to Simon, look at verse 10, uh, partway through. He says, Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. Right? You'll fish for people. In other words, from now on, what you've done your whole life, I'm going to use uh, those same skills, but give you an even higher calling. Okay? And so what happens? Look what happens. Look how they respond. Look at verse 11. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. They left everything. What did everything include? What did everything include? Everything included their nets. The very thing that represented their, their provision, represented their security, represented the future, right? They left everything, including the nets. So when it comes to your nets, whatever that might be, that whatever provides your safety or security or whatever, when it comes to your nets, the first thing you do is you let them down when he invites you to. You lay them down, right? I surrender this completely. I let go of my plans. I'm trusting you in this. And I have to say this as well. This part is not easy. It's not easy. There's nothing easy about this. This can be one of the biggest steps of faith for you ever, but it's not easy. But when you say, I'm just, not, I'm just letting down the, what makes me feel secure, okay? But I'm going to totally lay everything down, right? I'm laying it, laying it down. And I don't know who this is for, whoever's watching online today or is going to watch this in the future, but you need to know, okay? Not just, you need to not just let your nets down, but lay them down, right? Lay down your nets because you don't always have power to control, but you always have power to surrender, Okay, let me say that again. You might not always have power to control, right? But you do always have the power to surrender. I want to show you these, these words from Psalm uh, 20, verse 7. They're the words from David when he says this. Listen to what he says. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Now I'm going to pause there for a second. In other words, in our world, he might say it this way. That some may trust in the economy. Some may trust in whoever holds office, Right? Some would put their hope in their bank accounts or, or some in their metal, medical report or whatever. And David said it this way, though. He says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, right? But he goes on to say, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. While it's easy to trust in just what you see, we're going to trust God, even when we don't understand what's going on. God, help us to obey you. God, help us to surrender what we cannot control and to put our trust in, in a loving God who is in total control, who will one day wipe out every form of, of sickness, disease, sin, and, and discomfort. God will restore and, and, and right every wrong, okay? God, in your presence, there will be no more crying, no more pain, no more tears, no more heartbreak, right? While we trust in, while some trust in chariots, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now, if you find yourself today where you want to trust, but it's so difficult to trust in a God you cannot see, you know, maybe you feel like you're on the edge 
Uh, maybe you feel like you, you're just ready to give up. I want you to think for just a moment, okay? Think about this for just a moment and answer this question. Are you ready? When did this miracle take place? When did this miracle take place? When was it that the disciples who had given up hope, right, see the miraculous provision of the goodness of God through catching fish? When did that happen? The answer is at the end of a very frustrating day, right? When did the miracle t- take place? It happened when they had given up hope, right? When they had given up hope on catching anything. If, if you find yourself about to give up, about to surrender the dream of God answering your prayer, maybe it could be your, your marriage, you're, you're, you're fighting for it, but your spouse doesn't seem to even care, and you feel like you're just, you're hanging on uh, 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 for a moment longer, right? If you find yourself about to give up, remember, that when, when did the miracle take place? It happened at the end uh, of a very frustrating day, right? If you find yourself in the middle of a frustrating season, let me remind you, it's, it's not over, okay? Our God is still good. Our God is still here. Our God is still in control, okay? If you're not dead, you're not done, right? God has more for you. God is still with you. He is still faithful. And, and here's the cries of our hearts. Do not grow weary in in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. That's what Scripture says. Whatever you've been clinging to, have the courage of of faith to let go of your own plans, your own dreams. And I encourage you to cling to the everlasting goodness and the grace of our God. While some trust in what they can see, we put our faith and our trust in the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray today. Father God, I thank you so much for allowing us to just come and worship you wherever we might be today. Father, I know that, um, you know, the world's in a, in a crazy and weird place today, uh, but I know you are present. And even on this 4th of July weekend, even when we're not meeting in a building, God, uh, we are meeting all over the city and, and all over this country and different places people are watching, that, that God, you will still do uh, some crazy work and, some, and, and, and do some crazy things and, and be a part of people's lives, because you are everywhere. And so, Father, I just, um, I'm coming to you today. That to know that we can trust in you, wholeheartedly we can trust in you. But my prayer this morning, God, is that there's some people that just are not quite sure. And so, Father, they're asking, can we trust in God? And my answer is, I know God, and, and you know you, we can trust you. But, Father, I'm asking that you will reach out to people today and let them know that you are still, still present, still, still available, still faithful in everything that's going on. And my prayer is that, God, people will turn to you today, that they will let go of their dreams, their desires, the things that they're worried about, and just completely trust in you today. I know it's hard to do, God, but you are uh, a a miracle worker. You are an amazing God. Uh, Nothing is impossible with you, God. And so that is my prayer this morning, that that maybe today, maybe for the first time in somebody's life, they'll, they'll accept you as their, their Lord and say, as you as their Lord and Savior today, Father. Maybe that's today. That's, maybe that's today. Maybe it's today, Father, that maybe they've already done that, but they just truly haven't put everything in, in, in their lives into your hands. They haven't truly having full faith and trusting in you. And maybe, maybe that's a decision that they're looking for today, Father. Maybe they'll make that today. Whatever decision is made today, Father, I just, I just leave it in your hands. And I thank you for just being a part of, part of this worship service today. But most importantly, Father, just for giving us your son, Jesus Christ. And it's through him that we have this, this, this everlasting gift, this grace that we do not deserve. Uh, but so, Father, we just um, thank you again so much for that opportunity that we can come before you anytime we want and accept that free gift. Because we can trust in you that much and you're that good of a God. We pray these things. In Jesus' name, amen.
God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. When he rolls up his feet, he ain't the good Thanks again, guys, for uh, being part of our worship service today. We're so glad to have you here. 
And uh, online, I know it wasn't in the building, but online, and, and I know God is, is working within you, and, and I know that we can trust in God, and I, so I hope you made some decisions today to do just that. Hey, again, uh, enjoy your 4th of July. Uh, spend time with your family. Be safe with your family. But you know what? Uh, God has called us to do more than just spend with family. He's called us to share his good news. And so let me pray for that today as we end our service. Let's pray. Father God, thank you again for uh, this time we had to share, but more importantly, God, thank you for the opportunity we have right now as we finish up watching this service today that, that we go forward and, and we have the opportunities to share your word, share the good news, share the gospel, Father. So give us opportunities, give us tools, give us the resources. Uh, Father, it's a great weekend to be able to do that. We're around all kinds of people. And so, Father, uh, just encourage us, um, watch over us, and uh, just um, love on us. Father, we just leave it up to you. Watch over us, keep us safe this 4th of July weekend. We pray these things in Jesus' name. All the people said, amen.